Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at multi-threading and uh, not just multi-threading in sheeting but also in general. I'm going to show you some examples of multi-threading not in sheeting and then I'm also going to show you a tiny ESP using uh, multi-threading. I'm not going to show you exactly how to make the ESP but I will show you how I'm reading memory and uh, how to make a sheet with it. So let's just hop right into the project that I was working on just now. We're making a thread where we read and then we're using that info to make an ESP as you can see here. Now you can see a tiny bit of flickering and that's because I'm recording if I'm going to be completely honest. But it's also because of uh, thread safety and I don't have any of that. So there's going to be some um, race conditions causing the flickering to appear but um it's pretty easy to fix you can just use a uh, utex anyways let's make a new project so here we are in visual studio creating a new project we'll just call it multi threading okay welcome to the project now as always you want to press this button head into properties use c plus plus language standard to 20 then head to advanced change unicode to multibytes and that's all you'll need. Change this to release. Uh, also hit this button called show all files and now we can create our own files in add, new folder, source. Now in my source folder I'm gonna add a main, a mem, and a reader. Now you can call this whatever you want as long as it can read memory. Now let's create a class here called reader. Now for some reason this always lands outside so Click one, hold control, and click the other one, and drag it into reader. Okay, great. Now that I have some way to read memory, I'm going to head into reader.h. Now, up here at the top of reader.h, I'm going to hashtag include. I'm also going to include vector. Now, here we're going to need offsets, so I'm going to get those real quick. Great. At the time of recording, these are valid offsets at the moment. Otherwise, as said, you can just get them in the description. Now, let's create our um, handle to the game. Right. Uh, sorry, I just realized that if you change this, from debug to release it means that your properties get reset so i'm gonna head into my general and advanced again change to 20 and also change to multibyte sorry about that anyways this is how we open our handle now let's create our entity class this will store uh, anything that you need at the moment uh for me it's health and team because we need to check if the players on the same team or if the players are alive and I also needed the uh, PCS player pawn so I could um, make my own definitions like position in our um, main loop. And let's make an object for this class. Now in our class reader, let's change that to a capital R. Make it public for now. We'll need a client so we can get stuff like view matrix for the local player. Now we need our player list vector. As in our entity class and call it player list or whatever you like. And now we need our actual thread loop. So void thread loop. Uh, now let's make our class private and filter players. Now this is the actual function to loop through each player. Now moving into reader.cpp, it's pretty basic. So first we'll need to make our filter players function and then we can make our loop. So void reader filter players now if you followed my last video on performance this is the exact same um code so i'm going to skip through this for the most part now as always we start by clearing our player list which is what's making the code flicker then we get our entity list now for anyone not familiar this is what a entity loop looks like the PCS player pawn is what's used the most to get stuff like the HP of the player, position, team, etc. Now, let's get the health of this player that we're currently looping through and check if they're alive or not. Alright, great. Now, let's pass in our health to the entity class and also the PCS player pawn. Now, in most cases, you'd like to also pass in your team, but since I didn't go and get that offset because I'm lazy, uh, I decided just not to for this video. Uh, so let's do playlist dot push back and then push back our entity object. So that's all that there is to the filter players uh, function. We clear our playlist so we don't um, make it just even larger. Uh, then we read our entity list and then we do all our calculations to get the PCS player pawn, get the health, filter out the players that are dead, and then we add it to our entity class. 
and then we push back the vector. All right, great. So good job. Now we're gonna make the uh, thread loop. So void reader thread loop, and I like to print that the uh, thread one started just so we have confirmation. Uh, now while we don't have the client, client is equal to then get base client of dll sleep for five seconds uh now we're going to be using the exact same system as i always use make an integer called loop now let's make our actual world true loop we'll sleep for one second and if loop is more than 15 then we want to filter players and loop is equal to zero let's let's increase our loop too all right good job now we've uh, made a multi-threaded sheet Almost. Uh, let's also head into our main.cpp and we'll get to work on this. So we're going to include our reader slash reader.a and then we're also going to include the red. Now, first of all, let's make a object for our reader class. We can do that in the .h file of UL. Let's make our int main. So first off, we want to start our new thread. So what we're going to do is standard thread with thread. Now, just to be clear, I'm not sure if this is actually the like the common calling for uh, threads. I've seen some difference around, like I've seen create thread use, the actual function, and I've also just seen people do this. So I'm not completely sure if you're actually supposed to reference it, but it works for me. So I'm gonna call our thread loop, and then we'll also reference the uh, object. And that works for me completely without problem. Now we're gonna detach the thread. Sorry, there we go. All right, now you can do whatever you want with the info that you have. Um, you have access to this vector, don't forget. So what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to sleep while true, sleep for 500 milliseconds, and then we're going to loop through our vector. Now, in the ESP's case, uh, you just fucking render your ESP here, and now you have multi-threaded. Uh, but for this, we're just going to print out the HP of the player. Let's get up. Now I'm going to run this to make sure it works. Yep, as you can see, we're getting 100 HP here. Now if I damage one of them, let's see, they have 18. All right, great. So you made your sheet now, but now you're wondering how you can improve it. So the ESP is an example. It's flickering. So what do we do about that? Well, what I'm usually going to say is use the uh, mutex. The definition of mutex is that the mutex class is a synchronization primitive that can be used to protect shared data from being simultaneously accessed by multiple threads. Now, what does this mean? Well, I'm sorry to all of you watching, but I'm going to be pulling out paint and I'm going to be trying to explain that way. I try to make it as friendly for you guys as possible to make it kind of a dark mode, but... I'm oh, sorry for the flashback. We got our piece of data right here. Data, as in D. Now we have T1 and T2. Both of these guys are trying to access the same data at the same time. The difference between these two threads is that one is writing data and one is reading data. Now, the thing is with mutex is that it locks data from being written to or uh, read while one of them is writing or reading. You can think of it as a door. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I got this straight from an Indian man who taught me how mutexes work. So, you know, big up to him. I'll put his channel name if I can remember to. There's only one key, right? Uh, let's see if we can make a key here. What both of these threads have to do is go to each key. And then they have to go unlock the door. So this means that only one person can have the key. And then go get the data or write to the data through the door. Now, I'm hoping that you understand what that means but i think that should be good enough for you guys to understand point is that only one can write or read at once now how can we use this to our advantage well what we'll do is add a uh, mutex to our reader in private so let's first include mutex here now let's add a stx mutex and i don't know i'll just call it player list mutex in our reader.cpp we'll std lock guard std mutex lock and then we'll do player list mutex 
Now this will lock the playlist mutex while it's being written to. And there we go, you just solved your uh, flickering problem. Now in my experience this makes it a bit more laggy, I'm not sure. I don't have the best computer but I'll need someone to check that. But that is a solution that you can use. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry I haven't been posting but this is a, yet another video for you guys. Um, I was gonna make a uh, purple thumbnail by the way. Um, but I, I lost the color. Like, I don't know what color is. And unless I can, like, come up with some good idea of how to find the color. This is gonna be the color for a while until I find that color. Anyways, I'm yapping right now. I'll see you guys another time, though. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.